I wished I paid more attention to my gut feeling a few weeks ago when I met this guy who turned out to be a pervert narcissist. If I was listening to my intuition, I won't wasting so much time and so many tears. Let me show you how to become a dangerously intuitive person, becoming a human lie detector, and how to be able to read liars, which will help you to be more efficient in making the right decision in your future. And I can assure you, every time I'm going to say a point in this video, you're gonna have a light bulb said, oh yeah, I know this, I went through this. So I'm shortening this video by three different chapters. The first, I will show you the benefits of listening to your intuition, and it's so important as well for your health. The second one, how to read liars. Trust me, it's much easier than you think. And finally, how to do those simple little things to how to develop your own intuition. You're gonna learn so much, can't wait. Make sure you like and subscribe to this video. It's just a click for you and is a mega support for my channel. Really appreciate it. Click, click, click. Thank you. So the benefits of learning to trust your intuition, it's also called the highest form of intelligence and this is going to change you forever. So listen carefully, please. The studies show that intuitive decisions are rich faster and better than those who are landing on purely rational means, meaning more you overthink, less is good. So personal and better decision, you can do much better for that. So for those who are actively work on developing the intuition are capable of making better, faster, and more beneficial decisions. Another benefit as well is when you make intuitive decisions to take care of your body, for example, I should eat that and not that. You secured a balanced state of mind, and because of the intuition helps you to make positive and intelligent decisions, you will be making choices that prioritize you, your safety, your happiness. Your subconscious is where your personality resides. Psychologists claim that your intuitive decision represent the most direct path to your subconscious and to your true self. As you learn to recognize and trust your intuition, and we all have it, you will uh, more in sync with your true desires and you will learn more about yourself on a level that you could even only imagine in the past. You're gonna notice as well more your intuition is developing and opening your mind and start communicating freely with your consciousness, many creative thoughts are going to pop. So this is due to your newly unlocked ability to recognize deeper truth, pattern, and symbolism in life. And we have so many, sometimes so many signs. Regarding the health, come on, let's be honest and let me know in the comment section. How many times do we ignore our body subtle message. We may feel exhausted or sick or nauseous and yet we keep on pushing ourselves to the limit in order to meet deadline or satisfy others, right? Sadly, this results in chronic stress and plenty of health issues are attached to that. The good news is more you're going to listen and learn to listen your gut, more you're going to become aware of your body intuitive knowledge. This way you can easily tell when exactly Exactly. You need to take a break. You need to seek professional help or incorporate necessary lifestyle changes into your routine. Please pay attention to your gut and learn those quick techniques how to read liars. I know personally, and I do not listen sometimes enough, when someone is lying straight to my face, I have very funny physical things happening. I have the hair in my neck just moving a bit around, but it's super quick, okay? And in general, in my gut, again, it can be two, three seconds, very short. I feel like I just had a problem with my stomach or I ate something totally off. It's just like, Ooh, it's <laughs> to summarize. And usually when I have that and I keep looking at the person who's lying to me, my physical response, and I know I'm doing that and I cannot control, I have a smear on my face, but it's very particular. It looks something like, I know you are lying to me and I'm not going to say anything, but I can feel it. 
So, of course, it doesn't work every time. But I can tell you 99% when I have this physical reaction, I'm right. 100% right. In the years, I learned how to practice it. Sometimes I'm wrong with my intuition, but my intuition is never wrong. And the good news about it, more older we're getting, more our intuition is stronger because we have also experience who's coming with it, which is an amazing mix. And sometimes when I lie, someone lied to me and I don't say anything, he stayed with me for a few few days and I, I rethink about it and when I start rethinking about something that someone told me at this precise moment I know it's a lie even a small one do you have the same thing or am I the only weirdo here <laughs> so it's true some people excel of lying especially narcissistic people they can look at straight in your eyes and lie and lie and lie and you believe it they have the charming they have a sense of humor but also don't forget they have a very fragile ego and they love thinking very higher than self so much higher that they think they're superior everybody is beneath them it's terrible so sometimes what they do they make you feel like you are the most you unique person in the room, but when behind doors, they're acting horrendously. And it's just horrible human being, to be honest with you. And they're not going to change. It's not curable. And they're great actors. Why do I talk about it? Because one on six person you meet in your life is a pervert narcissic. Can you imagine that? That's a massive, massive percentage. And I can assure you, you know someone around you, maybe a spouse, a kid, a friend, a family member, someone you just notice the, the subtle signs, but they hear and you're like, okay, my girl is telling me something is totally off here. I can assure you, you are right. And you can get hurt a lot by a narcissic person. I'm going to call it PN, okay, to be a bit shorter. I've been reading and listening to a lot of YouTube videos recently that helped me as well with the healing process. And right now I'm reading a book. I cannot recommend you higher than this book. It's called It's Not You. It's from Dr. Ramani. It's available on Amazon and as well as an ebook or is um, audio book. I will link in my description box below and it's going to help you so much to understand that why some people drive us so crazy and actually it's not coming from you. Someone will start lying to you as well. So there's two different ways, but it's very funny to watch. When you start seeing the signs, it's almost like you are in a movie. <laughs> it's when someone gives you too many details about a big, big lie. Okay. Somewhere, oh, it's just like, oh, but you know, I've been with this, this person and this and this happened. And it's just like, hang on a second. This story doesn't make sense. Or you have the opposite of the people who are extremely vague. I hate when people said to me, and that happened with this person who said, oh, I'm a man of a few words. Really? Because every time I ask a precise question, it's so vague, even on a, let's say, oh, when are you going back to London in April, around there? And I'm like, but do you have a date? Did you book your ticket? And it was always vague. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how difficult. It's a simple question for a simple answer, right? Going back to the person who gives you too many details is because this person is trying to persuade you whatever they said. It's too precise, it's too much. And you can tell it because they try to sell their stupid hard story, you know? And in reality, what they're doing, they just over. Also, someone who is changing the topic very quickly. I'm going to go back to my story about London. So when are you going back to London? Oh, next month. Oh, by the way, in which restaurant we should go uh, eating tonight? And I'm like, hang on a second. That was an important question. So someone who is changing the topic so quickly on an important question, that means they're avoiding to answer to you. And if they're avoiding because they're going to lie or they don't know how to answer, but because it's a lie. Also observe the same way the people who speak very fast and change the topic in the same time. I know I'm giving you a lot of clue, but now when I've been reading and preparing this video for you, it's just like, oh my gosh, you were just under my nose and I didn't see it. <laughs> 
Let's talk about the eye contact. I notice personally, I don't know why, but people who are lying to me, usually they don't look straight in my eyes. And actually, they place their body, I don't know why, usually on my right side. They're sitting by my side or they start talking to me and they're turning on my right, pretending to pick up something. They just, you know, talk to you and said, pick up the phone. It's just, they're distracted, but their eyes, they're not looking at you. And actually what they do, they try to avoid the eye contact because they try to gain time to make up a story and they're going to try to make you believe in the story. So also it happens when you talk to someone and they're like looking at everything, the weather and the weather and the phone. It's just like something is off here. Something is not going to be honest going out of the mouth of this person. Also, there's two things about the eyes. Uh, that's something I'm having difficulties to pay attention because I'm wearing glasses for everything to read or see someone closer. But apparently if they have have their pupil dilated, that means they are lying. But it's, to me, it's, it's something I cannot pay attention for it. But another one as well, in when someone is blinking too much. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, I told you yesterday, I just went to a restaurant with my friend Peter and went straight to bed. <laughs> It's when they do that unconsciously, they try to make up a story and they all say, I'm lying, I'm lying. I know it's not funny, but <laughs> seriously, people, just people. Okay, this one is extremely important, so I'm going to be a little bit more serious. It's any time when people are getting super defensive when you ask a question. So you're going back to London, right, next month. Well, wh why do you ask? So they start gaslighting you, attacking you, or avoid the conversation by knowing it's a lie. For example, they will say, are you totally paranoid? I never said to you I was going back to London next month. You're like, no, I'm pretty sure you said that to me already. No, you, 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 you're losing your mind. When someone is returning the situation and make you feel small and little, or you completely stupid or paranoid or idiot, that's a big lie. That's a big lie. Or sometimes they're returning the question, say, well, why don't you go back to London as well? And when they do that, they return the question because they expect you have an answer. And the time you're preparing your answer, they're preparing the lie. You understand? They're reversing the situation and you're always going to be feeling guilty. You say, Shh, what did I say? I don't think it was just a so important and reactive question, you know, a reactive answer. They try to make feel bad about asking questions. And this is a defensive mechanism. And they're going to lie to you in your face. I take back the same example, okay. So when are you going back to London? And then instead of answering, they said, when am I going back to London? When, oh yeah, uh, I'm not sure, you know, London, na, 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 na. When they repeat your question, they say, oh, which date? And it indicates that the person by repeating the question is trying to gain time to think quickly for an answer. But I can assure you, it won't be an honest one. So try to get the conversation Focus with clear, simple question and look at their reaction. Focus and observe their behavior. It's going to be mind blowing, I can tell you. If you are with a liar, you're going to see straight away. Okay, this one is a bit tricky, but I find myself in this situation and. Uh, it's when you start making a lot of excuses on their behavior or rationalizing their behavior. So for example, your friends asking you, oh, what, what's going on with Peter? We don't see him anymore. And you're like, oh, no, no, he's okay. No, no, he's still around. But, you know, he, he's very busy with his new project. He's working very late. And when he doesn't, he's tired. So he goes to bed very early. He's not into the social life right now. When you start making a lot of excuses for someone and, you know, deep down, the behavior of this person is not right. And you try to convince yourself, to your family, to your friends, that's a big lie. And you involve into that as well. So you start to make up story for him or her, and in some level, you're in denial. And you start becoming his or her advocate. And that's no good. Please pay attention to that. All right, another one probably one of my favorite because if I cannot see closely the eyes, <laughs> I can see the body language. And it's massive because no one is controlling their body language. Okay, maybe psychopaths. 
I don't know, but let's just say to the real one between you and me, okay? And he says too much. Sometimes the body language is so much stronger than whatever the word I get out of their mouth, okay? So for example, I know if you want to know if someone is interesting in you, if they really like you or, you know, if they want something more serious with you, keep an eye on their feet. Even if they're sitting in front of you, but they fit on a different direction, I mean, they're not interested. The feet, which is the extremity of the body, they should be straight to you if they really like you or they're falling in love or something like that. I know, silly, but it works. And I tested myself. <laughs> Also, if they talk to you and they fit away, that means they're lying. They're just not interested. I remember being with this famous person who loved to go to the restaurant, but always sitting by my side. He was not moving much his body, but I was always the one who was making the movement and turning and said, so what do you want for uh, the entry? What do you want? To and I was always the one coming to him. And I noticed that and I thought, this is not right. It's okay to have a dinner or lunch, side by side, but the two persons should have the same behavior, turning around to each other, right? And that means someone is more interesting than the other. So if you keep an eye on the eye, good for you. For me, it's not a clue for me. But apparently some people who lied as well have a tendency to lift one eyebrow. If it's someone with a lot of Botox, <laughs> forget it. I'm lifting my eyebrow right now. I can't. <laughs> Pay attention as well to, and this is a big one, fidgeting. You know, people who are touching something nervously. For example, someone is talking to you and playing with the necklace, they phone, they watch. A woman will play with their hair, but really on an automatic mode. You know, you're gonna see that something is off or something say, oh, something is off, something is off. Just the way they, they're touching something, that's a lie, 100%. Sometimes as well, it's, it's, it's very funny. When someone talk to you, it's a lie, and they don't are conscious about, they start touching their nose or putting their mouth in front, or you know, that means actually the body said, no, body said, I'm lying. And apparently for something that I never noticed, some people can even say something, but the words will say something else. I don't know what it looks like because I'm a terrible liar, but um, yeah, so pay attention to body language. So important and you will know, you will know. This one, John, my first point about the intuition or my body reacting when someone is lying to me is when it doesn't feel right to you. And you don't know why, you're like, oh, I don't know, what is it? This, this doesn't sound right. Especially if you have those consistent feelings on a regular basis, that means you're not getting the full story, period. That means he's hiding something. And if you have this feeling, you are 100% right. Trust your intuition, stronger than us. Actually, we have this intuition to give us the sign and sometimes we do not listen enough. I wish I did. Also, you can notice when someone, uh, I mean, this is a little bit more tricky to me, but if someone like me who used to speak extremely fast and suddenly they say something super slow or with a lower voice or almost whispering, big sign that this person is lying. If this person usually speak very slow and take time to looking for the words, that might be different, so it might be a little bit hard to try to find the clues here. But another way as well, if someone when they talk and suddenly like, oh, oh, I'm thirsty, I need to drink. Or they, they try to reach something. That means the body is use a lot of energy in this lie and they get thirsty. <laughs> I mean, I give you all that. I hope you're taking notes. So going back to the intuition, this is not a magic wand, okay? So then you're like, ooh, I'm intuitive. And it's not going always to lead you to the perfect choice or the perfect outcome. But it's a tool, and it's a tool you can truly use. It's a guide that you can navigate the complex terrain of life and with more awareness and sensitivity. So simple things to do to develop that, very simple, is for example, meditate. Because the messages from your intuition tend to be quiet. So spending time in silence, even 5-15 minutes in the day, for in the morning, it will help you to hear and interpret those messages much better. Another one also is to learn from the past. Again, maybe you had a gut feeling something wasn't right when 
two, three weeks ago. Or maybe you had a vision or a really vivid dream, you know? Please pay attention to that feeling, to the dream, to the vision. Did you talk to yourself out of it and say, mm, why this is coming back to me. Try to remember exactly how you felt at this moment. Recall as many details as possible because the more you can get in touch with this part, that this part will try to warn you, the more you will trust it next time. Escape from the daily routine, meaning get away, slow, done. Go on a yoga retreat. Take a holiday. Take a weekend away. Go for a drive for a day. Spend a day of something that surrounding me something a bit different. Go for a walk. Just stop to be overly busy and be a little bit more sensitive to the quiet voices of your intuition. Try to clear up your schedule and see your intuition is it pipes you up, you know. Your intuition speak through as well your body. So the more you cultivated the somatic awareness, the more sensitive you become. And that's really extraordinary. So if you can get uncomfortable with a physical feeling when you're trying to make a decision, pay attention at this moment. Do you feel light or do you feel heavy? Do you have a, a, a sick feeling in your gut? Like I explained to you when it happened to me when someone is lying. Or do you have like maybe a diarrhea or even a headache? That's a big sign from your intuition, give you a warning. Sure, maybe sometimes it's some stress response, but if you stress about something that means that something is off as well. When the cognitive mind is busy, it can override your intuition, right brain and the subconscious mind. So I'm going to really simplify for you. When you're sleeping, your cognitive mind resting and open space for the subconscious mind to signal you in dreams. Not everybody's remembered their own dreams. I don't, or the very vivid one who is in the middle of the night, I woke up and I'm like, oh, I think I had a bad dream. Oh, it's just a bad feeling. If you can keep a notebook close to you a bedside table and writing down but that usually is your body giving you some signals as well so please pay attention to your dreams do not put that on the side say oh i just had a bad dream it means much easier than that i hope i put a big smile on your face make sure you smash the like button and subscribe please let me know in the comment section how can you see when someone is lying to you do you listen to your intuition do you have more tips to share i read all your comments if you haven't watched it yet this is highly recommended. Thank you so much for joining me. Big kisses. I see you to the next video. Ciao, ciao.